I hope you guys are doing well. If you are new here, my name is Anna, and I'm a 21-year-old living with Hector Hanum Pomino Harbor Party. And I upload new videos whenever I can about my life with Harbor Party and disability awareness in Denver. In today's video, I wanted to I wanted to talk about how somebody who is hosting a wedding can accommodate their disabled um, mess or, a, or attending. Now, you might be wondering why the heck does Anna have a fireplace burning on her TV? Well, that is a good question. I missed it. Recording a holiday vibe for those with disability, and I felt like painting out another video. So that is why I have a burning higher point on my TV. So don't mind that, and let me right into the into today topic: uh, how somebody hosting a wedding can and uh, that accommodate their disabled attending or, or their disabled neck. So my first tip for, for uh, anyone who in a wedding would have to be allow, allow them to bring a hair memo. And I cannot tell you how helpful this was when I went to my brother and sister in law wedding a couple weeks ago. If I did not have my best friend Holly with me, I would have to rely on my parents or my other brother to help me with food and sit down and knit away from all the people whenever. I I became overwhelmed, and so that would have been a big burden and weight on their shoulders that they would have to deal with if I did not have a hair member. And it would have been a weight that I would have had to deal with because I, if I didn't have a hair member, I probably would have been very overwhelmed and not very happy to be there. So having a hair member or allowing your disabled attendee to bring a hair member to a wedding or maybe a big event that you are hosting can help mimic their anxiety and help uh, miss a burden or the whole the event or maybe even the family member that the even attendee if they are also supposed to be um supposed to be helping maintain and hold the event it helps. So having an extra pair of hands is very helpful that way no one has to worry about, oh, is my disabled person okay? Or, oh, I have to help that person that food because I don't, he'll have to, he won't eat. So, I, so that is my first tip. Make sure that you are allowing your disabled attendee to, um, to bring their own hair member and um and perfect that so make sure you say hey you can bring your hair member if you want now some people may not want to bring a hair member to a big event like a wedding or a reception or a reunion but it is all it is always nice to offer that option because you never know what the person's with may be. 
my next um my next tip for you guys when hosting a big event and 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 inviting a even attendee if to if possible allow that person to tour the venue where the event will be in prior to the event happening. This will help the attendee address any ability in whom they may have with the venue um with the venue planning committee or with people who work at the venue and it'll also tell them if they need to bring portable ramp or anything like that. I know or if they are blind it 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 will also allow them to map out the place in um map out the venue in their head that way they don't have to constantly um constantly be worried that they might run into something or that they might trip over something or not know where something is. I know when my brother got married um I was able to attend the wedding rehearsal and then I was able to tell the wedding um the wedding venue um employee that I was disabled and that I was coming and they were able to provide a ramp for me to get in and out um in and out of the building if I wanted to. Now I'm gonna be quite honest with you. I did not use that ramp because my brother is an F baseball player and then pick me up with no problem and yeet me down the hill. But if you or how many who did not have that opportunity, then I'm uh, then touring the venue in advance and talking to them about um and talking to them about what you would need to get in and out at the venue on on wedding day or on event day prior to my event can be very helpful so that the venue know what you need and what they can and cannot provide for you on the actual day of the event. Along the line, if you know that one of your um, event, attend event attendee might be bringing a herbic animal to your party or wedding or event, it might be worth um it might be worth letting the um letting the uh venue know that a an, that a herbic animal um will be present during the time of your event in their venue. This will help the herbic drawn handle this will help the herbic drawn handle. Hand, oh my mother, I can't say that word. This will help the herbic drawn handle not be worried about will they be denied access to your important wedding day or um or event. How many the venue know? That a person will be attending with a herbic dog could be very helpful. So they're not worried about. So they're not worried about will I be denied? <laughs> because that is often a terrible nightmare for many herbic dog handlers. The next trip I have for you my when creating a heating arrangement for your event, 
make sure that you um put the even in the vinegar on the aisle or somewhere that they can easily be out and into eatery with their mobility equipment. Because let me tell you, many who are black people, a room who about 138 people can be very different if you are in a room or a wheelchair or have some type of mobility device. So make sure when arranging the seating for your party or event that you have, um, that you talk to the individual and make sure they want to be on an end cap or an aisle or maybe a table in your back. That way, in case they need to use the restroom or not to bend their way. I'm kind of medical or higher amenity during your event. Um, that individual would not have to deal with a massive amount of people when trying to end the building or go to the restroom. And my math tip when it comes to things that you can do to ensure that your uh, disabled attendee at your event has a wonderful time is to talk to that individual prior to the event day to make sure they don't have any <laughs> dietary needs or requirements that would prevent them from having a night time at your event. For example, when I went to my for a man, when I went to my brother and and our wedding, I knew that I wanted to dance with my brother at his wedding. However, I knew because I had a little bit of history processing disorder, I probably wouldn't make it to the end of the wedding. But I knew that it was very important that I dance with him, dance with, dance with him at his wedding. So we talked about what time in the night that I would be able to dance with him, and I knew about what time I would be on the dance for dancing with him. And that was really helpful for me to know that time and be able to say, oh yeah, I'm dancing with him at 9 o'clock p.m. So I can go home at 9.30 and avoid being overwhelmed. So I hope this video will hung my dawn. So I hope this video helped you uh, we helped you think about a uh, way you can accommodate your disabled attendee when uh, when planning a massive event. If it did, maybe a thumbs up. If you have any more tips on how to accommodate a disabled attendee at a big event like a wedding, a reunion or a reception, let me know down in the comment below and subscribe if you're new and I will see you by